Welcome back to the Lighting Outlet channel. Today I'm going to be talking about LED lights flickering and the top 10 steps how to fix it. Uh, below in the comments, I've timestamped each step so you can skip ahead if you want. Firstly, we need to identify what kind of type of light it is. Uh, is the light flickering on its own? Is it the whole circuit flickering? It could be a compatibility issue, not talking together different products, or it could be a faulty driver. So we'll go through each step, uh, each type of product, and we'll break it down. Uh, so here we go. Okay, downlight and dimmer compatibility. The biggest issue you're gonna have uh, with flickering is mostly from downlights or any kind of lights where you've upgraded with old dimmers. So anytime you change from incandescent, CFL, halogen and you're using the dimmer and you upgrade to LED, chances are that dimmer won't work with that LED. So what you need to do is try and buy the same brand dimmer as the downlight. So if the downlight's a certain brand, buy the same brand dimmer. This is the only way you're gonna know it's tested on that light and it works. And if there's any kind of issues, you can go back to that supplier and they're gonna have to sort it out because it's their product. Otherwise, there's a product that we use, which is we swear by, is DigiNet, uh, the MEDM. We've sold that one for a number of years now. Early stages of LED, we just stopped selling dimmers because so many were just incompatible. There's many issues. Over the years, I have got a bit better with dimming, uh, but with the DigiNet, we know it does work. Uh, just keep in mind, that one is 240 volt and it is for Australia only. Um, but if you're in different countries, you could look into it. Uh, I'll leave a link down below in the, in the comments, so make sure you check that out. But again, just make sure you're buying high quality dimmers. Uh, you can always go back to that manufacturer and just ask them which one they recommend. And again, if they've got it in writing, you can go back to that uh, and use that to your advantage. Okay, the next one's installing non-dimmable products. Uh, a lot of times with our customers, they'll put in a product and again, it's not dimming or it's flickering. A lot of the times it's a non-dimmable product. So make sure you double check your specifications, read the products clearly if you're unsure, reach out to the manufacturer or the brand and just ask them, is this product dimmable? You can ask them if it's a good dimming product even. Um, but just make sure you double check that it's dimmable because a lot of our customers try and dim non-dimmable products and it just won't work. It's a, it's a quite a simple one there. Okay, the next one is faulty drivers. So if the light's flickering, you need to look at it and think, is the whole light circuit flickering or is it just the one individual light? If it's the one individual light, it's most likely the driver's cooked or burn out, uh, so you need to replace that driver. Just keep in mind, you have to match the specs exactly the same as the driver. Sometimes it's easy just to replace the whole light. Uh, you can't just mix and match drivers. Some of the drivers are made to suit that light, different voltages, different wattages. You're best to just go buy the whole light again. Otherwise, if it's say an LED strip, you could just buy another driver. So go back to the manufacturer, ask them, find the SKU or the product code on the light and go back to them and ask them if they've got a replacement driver uh, and then go from there. But if it's a faulty driver, if it starts flicking on its own, so you've got an LED strip and the, the, the starting the strobe, chances are the driver's either overloaded or it's burned out. So you have to replace it with the same specs. Just be careful of that. Make sure it's exactly the one that you've replaced it with. Okay, the next one is ripple effect. I'm not sure how this works in different countries, but here in Australia, uh, it's about 7 a.m. in the morning, they turn on from off-peak to on-peak, and that night they turn it from on-peak to off-peak. They do this overnight to save power, so there's enough to share around. The grid simply won't be able to handle it otherwise. Uh, it's quite severe in some suburbs, especially in Sydney, um, somewhere you just can't do anything about it. Now, with LED products, they're the ones that get affected most because they use least power. Halogens and incandescents, they seem to be fine. They don't see the effect. Uh, but as soon as you put the LED on, uh, for around five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, uh, your lights are just gonna flicker. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, there is a couple of products that do work, um, but it won't work in every case. So you're best to speak to your electrician about this. They can install a couple of different uh, products. One here is that we sell, I'll put it in the comments below. It's a load bypass. This one just sits behind your switch. Uh, we've had a lot of customers that works for, but again, it's not guaranteed. So the ripple effect is a big issue in Australia. There's not much you can do about it. It basically means the LEDs aren't using much power, so they're flickering just for that swap over. So it can be very frustrating, uh, but it's only for a couple of minutes each time. So ripple effect, yeah, good luck with that one. Okay, the next one is loose connection. So any kind of socket, any kind of swap over from a driver to a globe will have a connector. Just make sure they're all nice and tight. So the MR16s are really bad for this especially. Just pull it out and just make sure it's in there nice and tight. You can even turn it around the other way. 
uh, make sure it's in there nice and tight. Sometimes the connections do get a little bit loose in here, you might have to change the lamp holder. Um, and again, for other products, you, this is a GU10, you might have to click it in. So just make sure it's clicked in. Uh, if it's Edison screw, make sure you've screwed it the whole way in. Bayonet, make sure it's clicked in. Uh, if it's stripped, make sure the connectors are nice and tight. The solder points might have come off. Just check all connections and make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, the next one is dirty sockets. Sometimes dust can make its way, especially if it's in ceilings, into in between the connections. So best to just turn off your power um, and just make sure you clean around the connections. Uh, be careful, sometimes don't stick your finger in there, you might get a shock. So just give it a nice clean, make sure there's no dust in between the connections. And again, just make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, so the next one's overloading circuits. So this could be many different issues. Uh, if, for instance, if you've got an LED strip and you've got a driver, you need to look at the total wattage of the strip. So the strip might be 30 watts in total. So if it's five watts per meter and you've got 10 meters, that's 50 watts. You've got to make sure you've got a driver big enough to handle that wattage. So you need to drive at least 60 watts, prefer around 100 watts. If you've got a 20 watt driver and you're running 50 watts of strip, you're simply going to get flickering, you're going to get issues. So you've got to make sure you've got an extra 10% minimum um, load on top of that uh, to make sure you don't get that flickering or any other issues. Uh, another thing as well is uh, overloading circuits in your house. Most times the, the lights are going to be wired to their own circuit, so this shouldn't be an issue. Uh, however, they can be overloaded with other products, fans, whatnot. Uh, you just got to make sure they're not overloaded. So electrician's best to speak to you about that. Okay, the next one is faulty switches. So out of the box, sometimes uh, the switch could be faulty. Very rare, but it can happen. Uh, but most likely it's going to be the switch itself over time is just going to get a little bit loose. So you'll notice it won't have that nice click about it. It'll be loose and it'll kind of flick in between the two which causes the flickering. Uh, on the back here that has the springs, sometimes the springs wear out and that'll cause that to become loose. So check the switches, make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, the next one's push button dimmers. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but we've had customers come to us before uh, using the push button dimmers. So these ones here always have power to them. So you'll notice in the corner here, there's a little light. Some of the push button dimmers have a light around the outside. So what that means is there's always power going to it. So it can trickle along to LEDs and because they don't use much power, they can flicker and pulse as well, especially when they're turned off. So uh, check the dimmer again, make sure it's compatible with your lights. Okay, next one's in rush current. So when you have appliances that are high powered, fridges, microwaves, uh, dryers, dishwashers, uh, this can cause your LED lights to flicker and pulse. Uh, because they use so little power, the voltage is getting taken for the other appliances and you will see pulses for that. Uh, they all should be on their own circuit, lights should be on their own circuit, so it shouldn't be an issue, but it still can pulse uh, throughout the circuits. Um, so that's only usually just very quickly, uh, you'll notice it pulsing in and out when um, a high powered appliance wants to be turned on. Okay, table lamps and floor lamps flickering. So on floor lamps, you'll notice on the cord, sometimes they have a little dial dimmer. Um, and then on table lamps, especially the touch table lamps, they have a built-in dimmer. So the companies that build these lamps, they're gonna put in cheap dimmers because they wanna keep the cost down of the light. So these dimmers need really good quality globe and even then it might not work. So don't cheap out in the globe, buy a real high quality globe, um, but at the same time, that's not guaranteed. You might have to try a couple of different globes so they talk together and work in sync. Uh, so it is a quite tricky one with dimmers built into lights. Uh, generally, they're not the best dimmers, so it's just trial and error of that one. So in conclusion, always just buy from quality brands. Don't buy cheap imports or cheap dimmers, you're just gonna get headaches. Buy from brands that are well known, that have got reviews, good feedback, and have got good after sales service that can help you out and recommend the right one, maybe a fix. Um, someone might even send someone out to help you and fix it. Uh, if you're getting the ripple effect, uh, one option you could look at as well is maybe going solar, getting off the grid, re less relying on that. Um, so if you learned something new today, please hit that like button, subscribe, uh, and also please leave a comment below. If you've come up for your own fix, please let us know. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let us know as well. And I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.